Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Daily Dose of Dat. I hope you're all doing well. We've got a jam-packed episode today, so let's just jump right in. So we're going to take a deep dive into the cyclical supercell that tore through south-central Kansas on May 18th, 2025, which produced five EF3 tornadoes. These powerful tornadoes tracked across Kiowa, Edwards, Pratt, Stafford, and Reno counties. So let's just get right in. This is a, well, this is a photo of the Plevna, Kansas EF3 north, as it was northwest of Turan. This was provided by Lincoln Hauser on Twitter. You can go check him out. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into the damage analysis. So we're going to start off with the first EF3 tornado that occurred from the supercell southwest of Greensburg, Kansas. So this was the first tornado of the supercell, and not very long tracked, and it didn't really hit much, but it hit a lone farmstead along this road here, uh, and uh, damaged out a metal building system and some trees. So this is some pretty gnarly tree damage. It was raid uh, low end EF3, I believe, uh, total denuding, some very minor debarking, and then the metal building system was completely destroyed. This was raided EF3 with wind speed estimated at 155 miles per hour. So around that mid to high in EF3 mark before it, uh, it turned north and then occluded to the northeast. And then the second cycle uh, was south of Greensburg. This was a very, like, emotional night for people. Or not emotional, but, like, kind of, like, hype or, like, uh, I don't know what the right word is. Because this night, this day seemed very reminiscent of May 4th, 2007. With, the, of course, the Arnett, Oklahoma tornado occurring. And on May 4th, 2007, there was also a powerful drill bit near Arnett. And then later in the evening at night, there was also the Greensburg supercell and the many intense tornadoes that occurred after it. So this one certainly was not close to as strong as the 2007 event, but it was very reminiscent in the regard of, of it being a nighttime intense wedge tornado, almost hitting a very well-known tornado town. This tornado did not hit much besides trees and power lines. This is the only photo provided of the EF3 tree damage produced from it at 140 mile per hour winds, which is low end EF3. So there's not much to talk about this one, but the next few after. So this was the EF3 following Greensburg. So the next cycle produced a EF3 near Haviland, Kansas. And this one was probably one of the more stronger ones, or maybe as strong, or yeah, as one of the, uh, of the entire supercell. It produced some really intense EF3 tree damage, and just based off these far away photos alone, there's some pretty gnarly ground scouring. Trees are just completely snapped, debarked, it probably debarked. I can't see here, but I'm sure there's some reminiscent. Uh, debarking but yeah there's large limbs just thrown throughout the field here this is usually damage reminiscent of a violent tornado in the ef4 category uh there's there just no structures for it to impact in this area it was relatively uh rural and it just didn't really hit uh farm sets compared to the next few tornadoes after it but yeah really gnarly tree damage and then the next tornado after this one occluded to the north, touched down north of Colson, Kansas. And then this one was uh, more of an east-northeast path compared to the previous tornadoes. I believe the supercell is going through some uh, reorganizing and restructuring of its... Just its a... Uh, you know what I mean. And then the, the path started to... Uh, change especially with plevna kansas too, more east northeast path compared to a northeast and then including north but this next tornado uh let's see here produce a high end ef3 damage to a metal building system of sorts i forgot exactly what this it was a plant of sorts but the metal building here is completely torn and mangled 
uh, it was this was officially the highest rated tornado event with wind speeds estimated 160 miles per hour. I don't know if it was actually actually the strongest of the event, but uh, some pretty intense tree damage too, but not uh, as strong as the previous one or Plevna in my opinion. Uh, but now after the, so yeah, this one continued east northeast. This also did not really hit much. And it lifted near Iuka, Kansas. I assume that's how it's pronounced. There are a few photos of it along U.S. Highway 281 of it, including it was a pretty rope tornado in the uh, illuminated by lightning. And now we get to the the big boy here. This one was the the most known one of this sequence, just because of its radar signature, the photos of it. It was this was the quote, Greensburg of the night. Uh, let's get into the damage area. Yeah. So this uh, this one touched down northwest of Preston, Kansas, and pr immediately produced... Uh, sorry, let me find the Im correct images here. Immediately produced uh, EF3 damage out of Farmstead. Uh, there was a metal building system destroyed. Uh, some no pretty gnarly tree damage here. This is yeah, remnants of the EF3 category. Not really violent here. Pretty standard EF3 damage, I would say. Uh, I believe the estimated winds here were 155 miles per hour. And then continuing east northeast, there was another farm set impacted, and another another metal outbuilding or farm building completely destroyed. Wind speeds were also estimated at 155 miles per hour at this location. And continuing, uh, no, excuse me, this is the same image as this, I believe. And more intense tree damage. And then south, so as it started to near Plevna, Kansas, it impacted a farmstead. No, excuse me, this this was more of, excuse me, this was, this was near Tehran, Kansas. So this concrete home here was had its roof removed and then a few exterior walls collapsed it's very rare you usually see actually not very it's usually incredibly rare you see concrete block stucco homes uh in the direct path of an intense to violent tornado this one was directly impacted and was destroyed at ef3 intensity surrounding tree damage looks pretty violent but you know it's hard to tell with debarking and denuding it could be done from debris impacts so i'm not 100 percent sure ef4 winds were sustained here based off i can't show specific details but based off the revised enhanced video scale that's coming out in a few years based off the preliminary damage indicator for the new concrete block stucco residence homes uh, low-end EF3 seems appropriate with complete roof removal and very minor exterior wall collapse with wind speeds estimated at 140 miles per hour. That is actually what this was rated, so I don't really have any disagreements here. It may have been stronger just based on the trees, but again, it's really hard to tell based on debris impacts. But as it neared Plevna, it impacted... Sorry, I'm trying to find the images here. It impacted a uh, home. This is definitely the worst home damage from the tornado. It completely, uh, nearly flattened it. But there were some small interior walls remaining uh, near near the front or the back of the home. But most of it was completely destroyed. Uh, main uh, wall to stud connections was nails. And same thing with the sill plate connections. I believe this is on a floor joist system. I'm not sure if the sill plates beneath it are anchored if this is a floor joist system. Either way, the wind load is weaker here with the studs uh, possibly toe-nailed to the floor uh, joist headers. So an EF3 rating is appropriate here, luckily on the lower end. Which is actually, was, this is what uh, that was rated. It was 145 miles per hour, I believe. And surrounding surrounding damage doesn't seem too impressive either. There's nearby trees that are still standing with uh, leaves on them. So, yeah, low end EF3 seems uh, appropriate here. And then the tornado, the, excuse me, that home was uh, here along South Langdon Road. 
And then this is where the, the tornado started to include. If the tornado didn't include, uh, I think it, it was likely going to miss Plevna. Originally, that's what I thought was going to happen, but uh, it did include, uh, excuse me, occlude, and it occluded right into Plevna. But thankfully, by some miracle, it was it got much weaker, and it only impacted mainly the central and west side at EF2 intensity. Uh, there was a van thrown, I uh, forgot how many yards, 40 yards, and was s slightly mangled near the top, and lo uh, loss of windows and the windshield. And then a home, I believe, at the same property, you can see in the back there, uh, here, uh, lost its roof. I believe this was rated high in DF2. Seems appropriate. It's The trees nearby may suggest a little lower, but I, I don't really have, there's, I think 130, 130 miles per hour seems pretty adequate here. Uh, another home in Plevna along West Third Avenue was uh, destroyed. Complete roof removal and a few exterior walls collapsed. This was also rated high in DF2 here. So that's... And, and then, excuse me, as uh, continuing north, then it produced some minor EF2... The EF1 damage as it occluded and then it lifted north of Plevna. So that's this 5 EF3 tornado sequence here with Plevna being the, the big one. This photo from Justin Drake was of uh, Plevna. This, yeah, this was southwest of Plevna. So this is what I mean by it was very Greensburg esque. Uh, it just had a very similar appearance, very low LCLs, or low base, and just a wide tornado. The, yeah, so we'll go into a bit of a radar analysis here. I have GR2 analysts pulled up here, and then I overlaid the paths of the tornadoes here. So, this was the first EF3 tornado we discussed south, way southwest of Greensburg, and northwest of Coldwater, Kansas. Uh, the so the supercell was a bunch of showers, and they re and they all, they all merged together in a very Greensburg two thousand seven fashion, and then very quickly as they developed, you, you still they're still merging here, and very quickly the first tornado touched down within just like probably thirty minutes of it getting together, which is really quick. And then, so yeah, this was the first EF3 tornado with wind speeds estimated 155 miles per hour. Uh, kind of hard to see here, but I think the track might be a little off. I think this may be the tornado here. Or it could be an issue of radar tilting. The track might be right. Uh, you can see a uh, very small debris ball here. I'm not really sure when it impacted uh, at this location. There wasn't really much to hit. And then continue north, Kappa got a bit stronger, more pronounced debris signature here. And it started to get really pretty intense here. A very tall, uh, not tall, small, intense couplet. And then there's a definitely a pronounced debris signature here. And then it kind of just sat on the top of itself or just stood still for a little bit, stalled. And then eventually it turned northeast and dissipated. I'm not really sure why the path is off here. Again, it might be a radar tilting issue, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't have access to high-resolution satellite imagery of this event to determine where that, the paths actually occurred, but it's likely close enough. So after that first EF3 dissipated, the new cycle occurred southwest of Greensburg, excuse me, south-southwest of Greensburg, and quickly developed as well. And this one appeared to maybe be a little more intense as it was forming, but kind of a really broad, sort of weak signature. Not Nothing too impressive, but definitely significant looking tornado. And then continued southeast of Greensburg, and then kind of a, took a dip down to the east-southeast and then included to the north. There was also an EF1 tornado up here. And then the, there was a new cycle right as Greensburg was occluding of a, the Haviland, Kansas EF3 tornado. This one potentially 
was one of the strongest or the strongest of the event in my opinion just based off tree damage also had a quite a strong tight signature at this point i think it was around this point when it was causing that really strong ef3 tree damage we were looking at earlier with the ground scouring and potential debarking and that passed north of Haviland, still a really strong signature and then just slowly made its way out as it continued north and then the next EF3 uh, touchdown north of Collison, Kansas, and uh, continued east. I forgot specifically where the metal building was destroyed, somewhere on the path here. Not a particularly intense tornado. Again, this was officially the strongest of the event by estimated wind speeds from damage indicators with 160 miles per hour winds. Uh, but yeah, not, not an impressive signature. And then dissipate north uh, near Ayuka. And then I opened Plevna on a separate GR2 tab. Because uh, it used a different radar. Uh, it used the Wichita radar. So right after Ayuka dissipated, the storm started to reorganize itself again. And then pretty quickly wrapped up into a intense tornado really fast. This kind of came out of nowhere, I'd like to say. I uh, knew, like, you had, had an idea it was going to cycle, but it was it got strong really quickly. Uh, already a very deep uh, tornado debris signature here and a couplet. And it was ar around this section here between these two counties where it was producing most of the EF3 damage documented from it. And then continue northeast. And uh, signature started to get really tight here and intense. And uh, right here is where it was. We were everyone was starting to get a general idea of what was going to happen. Uh, it was expected that Plevna was probably going to be destroyed and wiped off the map. By some miracle, it weakened. And uh, yeah, uh, at the time, in a like non fear mongering ma manner, a lot of people. We're thinking this is probably uh, an EF5 at the time. And it certainly may have been. There just wasn't. It was just in really rural areas at this point. There wasn't any farmsteads to impact. Uh, tree damage was pretty gnarly. Uh, likely EF4-ish. Uh, I remember there was a photo of some tree line that was just obliterated. I, I don't know where that was specifically. I think it might have been southwest of Plevna. Or at least near that one farm set that was destroyed near Plevna. But uh, yeah, a really gnarly uh, velocity couple and debris signature at this point. The continued northeast, people were really starting to get worried. Even a bigger debris ball and then even more intense couplet as it was nearing Plevna. And then it impacted Plevna at this point and was, def was definitely weakening on radar. So it had some hope. That everything would be maybe okay. And thankfully it was. I mean, obviously there was significant tornado damage in Plevna, but not as uh, bad as people were m making it out to be. And then continuing north, it uh, occluded and then eventually dissipated after a little bit after impacting Plevna. Uh, if you notice the thumbnail uh, on the left side, there is a wedge tornado. That is taken by my good friend Kelton Henderson and Chris Risky. Uh, uh, I'll go check out his channel in the video. It's a really uh, fantastic video. They cover the other tornadoes they saw, including Arnett, Oklahoma. But, uh, yeah. Huge uh, thank you to the National Weather Service Office in Dodge City for their detailed survey work on this event. If you got questions, comments, or concerns... Please drop them below, leave a reply, and thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.